Hi, I'm Pastor Jacob Riggs at Central Oaks Community Church. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Today is Easter 2020, and I want to talk about Easter. Um, Easter is a really important time for our, for our church and for our, our culture, and, but I want to talk about what the real meaning of Easter is. So you might think of Easter and you think of something that you and your family does together. Maybe it's dying Easter eggs like my family does every year. Or maybe you go on egg hunts or maybe you go get your picture taken, your children's picture taken with the Easter bunny or something like that. But what, what if I were to tell you that Easter is way more important than all of those things that our culture emphasizes. Consider this question. What if Easter is about something way more important than many think? What if it's more important than the bunny and the candy and getting dressed up to go to church or things like that? What if Easter is about life and death? What if the story of Easter is something so important that if you heard it and understood it, It could change the rest of your life and even the rest of your eternity. Would you want to listen? I think you would. That's what I'm here to tell you about today. The real message of Easter is a message about Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead. But that story about his resurrection from the dead won't make any sense unless you learn and know about some other truths before we get to that part of the story. I have six truths for you today about the real message of Easter, and I hope and pray that you'll join in and follow along and pay attention with me. Here's the first truth. The first truth, if you're going to get the real message of Easter, is that God is the loving ruler of the world. God is the loving ruler ruler of the world. Look at what it says in Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Did you know that God created the whole world? He created every tree. He created every animal. He created every person. And people were were made unique because people were made in his image, designed to be his subjects and his representatives to rule the world. This is the way God designed the world to be. But is is that the way it is now? Are we functioning like God originally created us to function in the world under his rule, representing him in ruling the world like he wants. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about a game that I played when I was a kid. It was called King of the Mountain. Some of you may have played this game. Maybe you didn't if you're from Southeast Michigan. There are no hills here, so you probably didn't play this game. Maybe you played it on a snow mound at some point. But we play this game. You have to get on a hill somewhere, maybe a hill like this. This is like the picture-perfect hill for this king of the mountain game. And the object of the game is for you to stand on the peak, the crest of the mountain, and keep anyone else from knocking you off. If you weren't at the top of the mountain, your job was to run up and to knock the person off of the top of the mountain any way you could. It was training for football, it seems. And if you stood on the top of the mountain, then you were the king or the queen of the mountain. This game is mostly harmless, but it shows something and reveals something about our hearts that is true even as little children. We all have a desire to be king. We all have a desire to be queen, to be the one who's in charge. That leads me to the second truth, if you're going to get the real meaning of Easter. The reality is, friends, we all reject God's rule and try to be our own ruler. God is the loving ruler and creator of the world, but we actually reject his rule. We don't want him to rule over our lives. We want to be our own king. We want to be our own queen. This is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. The Bible also says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's true of you, friend, watching here with me today. That's true of me. 
We all want to be our own king. We all want to be our own queen. And we don't want God to be in charge of us. What will God do about our rebellion? That leads me to the third message of Easter, and it's a sobering truth. God won't let us keep rebelling forever. God won't let us keep rebelling forever. God takes our rebellion seriously because he cares about us. He cares about other people, and he cares about his creation. And when we're in charge of our own lives, when we're the ruler of ourselves, and we think we're the ruler of our domain, we actually don't serve other people well. We hurt ourselves, we, t- we ruin our bodies, we ruin the earth around us, we ruin relationships, and the world is a mess, and the world is falling apart because we have ruined it, friends, because of our rebellion. This shows us that God is not going to just be okay with our rebellion forever. My family and I have a little dog named Lola. This is her right here. She is a Bichon Shih Tzu mix. She's a wonderful little dog. She loves going on walks. In fact, if you say the word walk, she will get really excited if you just say it. She loves walks, she loves treats, and she's an obedient little dog. But imagine if Lola did everything in her power to prove to me that she didn't want to obey what I said. What if whenever we went outside, she ran away as fast as she could? We would take all our energy and maybe put up a reward sign around the neighborhood to try to find Lola, and we would call around and ask people if they heard her or saw her maybe, and we would try to go find her, but then we find her and we bring her back, and then she does it again not that long after. What if she made it clear that she didn't want to sit underneath our authority? Eventually, we would have to say, well, let Lola do what she wanted to do. Maybe we would look for somebody else that would take her. Maybe we would just give up and stop looking for her if she ran away that many times. Friends, consider what we're doing when we make ourselves our own ruler. What should God do when we tell him, I don't want you to be in charge of me. I don't want your authority over my life. I want to be in charge of me. Wouldn't he be right to eventually let us have what we want? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. God is a just God. He gives people what they deserve. He would be wrong not to. How many of you would see a judge and look at somebody who is standing before the judge who is obviously guilty of crimes and the judge just to say, oh, don't worry about it, no problem. That would be wrong of the judge to do that. Think of the family of the person who was hurt by that person who is guilty. There's something wrong about that. There would be something wrong if God did not give us what we deserve If you're listening today, you need to know this. This is so important. When we go our own way, we're saying to God, we don't want you. And because God is good and the giver of all good things and the author of life, when we turn our back on him, we're choosing hell. And God will give us what we really want. This is the third main truth about Easter. Is there then no hope? Is that all there is? Are we just lost and hopeless and headed for judgment before God? Yes, there is hope. That brings me to the fourth truth, if you're going to understand the real meaning of Easter. It's this. Jesus, God's son, lived for God, yet died for rebels. Jesus, God's son, he lived for God, yet he died for rebels, Here's what it says. Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 38. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus Christ came to earth and lived life just like you and I should have lived. He was always submissive to his father's rule. Even up to the point of his death, Jesus Christ prayed, Father, not my will, but what your will is, let that be done, even though he didn't, even though he had struggles with obeying it himself. Jesus Christ lived perfectly under God the Father's rule. Who would you die for? 
Think about this question. Who would you die for? Who's somebody, the first person that comes in your mind that you would die for? First person that comes in my mind is my beautiful wife. I, I, I think I'm not the most noble person in the world, but I think if push came to shove, I think I would be willing to lay down my life for my wife. The other two people that came into my mind are my two daughters, our two daughters. I think I'd be willing to lay down my life for our two daughters because I love them, because they're so special to me. But Jesus' death on the cross is way more costly and way more special than us, you and me, dying for someone that we love. Because look at what it says in the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. We might die for someone we love very much, a dear friend or a dear family member. Jesus Christ didn't die for a dear friend or a dear family member. He died for the unrighteous. He died for rebels. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God loves you so much that he didn't send his son to die for you when you did things the way you should have. He didn't send his son to die for you because you loved him enough. He sent his son to die for you while you were still a rebel against God. How great is this love that God has for you and for me. This is an amazing truth that you need to get. This could change your life, friends. But that's not all. The fifth truth of Easter is even more powerful. Here's what it is. God raised Jesus to life again as the ruler of the whole world. God didn't just leave Jesus dead in the tomb. He raised him to life again as the ruler of the entire world. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ really did die. He really did breathe his last. His body was literally physically dead and they laid him in a tomb but then later, he actually started breathing again. He rose again from the dead, and he appeared to hundreds of people at a time. He appeared to his disciples, his apostles. They touched him. They talked to him. One man even touched his side where the wound was and his hands where they nailed him to the cross. He even ate food and appeared to so many people. Jesus Christ actually came alive again. He was raised to life by God the Father so that he could be the ruler of the world. Now Jesus Christ is in heaven where he ascended to be with God the Father. Here's what Jesus Christ does right now. It says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 that he upholds the universe by the word of his power. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. I can't hold very much up. I've been trying to do some push-ups lately, and I did 20 this morning, and I had to do 10 at a time. <laughs> I can hardly even hold myself up with my own strength. Jesus Christ upholds the universe, and not even with his physical body. He upholds it just with his words. Jesus Christ has been exalted to be the king of kings, the ruler of the whole world. Not only does he sustain the world and uphold the world right now, he also gives new life to people right now. Look at what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You can have new life right now if you put your faith and confidence in Jesus Christ. If you turn from living your life as the ruler and let him be your ruler, then Jesus will give you new life. He will send his spirit to come live inside your heart. He'll give you new desires for God. He'll give you desires to live for him, to love other people like he wants you to. He'll give you a preview of heaven by the spirit of God that lives inside of you purpose in your life right now meaning joy and peace this is what Jesus can do right now for rebels who put their faith in him we can be sure that if Jesus Christ has died for us and has been raised again from the dead when he returns to earth to judge 
which is one other thing that God the Father has given him the authority to do, when he comes back to earth to judge, we can be sure that we will not be judged by him because he has saved us by his death and his being raised to life. That leaves us, friends, with a question. How should we respond to this? What are we supposed to do with this information? Here is the important question for you. There are two ways now to live. There are two different ways that you could live. The first way is this. You could live your way. You could reject God to be your own ruler. But the result, as I showed you in the Bible and God's word, is that you'll be condemned by God if you do that. Eventually, you'll be facing judgment from Jesus Christ when he returns. This is what will happen if you live your own way as your own ruler. Or there's another way that you could live. You could live God's new way. God's new way means that you surrender to Jesus. You give over your life to Jesus. You cast down that imaginary crown on the top of your head at the feet of Jesus and let him be in charge of you. Then you rely on Jesus. You put your faith and your confidence in what he has done in his dying for you on the cross and his raising again from the dead to give you new life. Rely on Jesus now for your salvation and rely on him for the rest of your life. The result is that you'll be forgiven by God. All of your sins will be wiped away. Everything wrong that you've done will be wiped away and the Father will renew you and make you his son or his daughter. The the result is also that you will have eternal life with God. Eternal life means life with purpose and meaning here right now, but it also means life forever when Jesus Christ returns. Which one will you choose? The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 36, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. This is the question, friends. Which way do you want to live? Which way do you want to live? If you don't want to live God's new way, why not? Maybe there's something about Jesus or something about the Bible that you are unsure about. Maybe you're unsure that God really exists. Maybe you're unsure that the Bible is trustworthy. Or maybe you're unsure that you're really all that bad. This is a very important question, isn't it? Because if this is true, even if you don't consider yourself to be a Christian, if what I'm saying is true, this has eternal implications for you. You should at least look further into this. You should at least find a Bible and read what's called the book of Mark. See what it says about what Jesus did. See what it says about how people responded to him. Why not just start to try to talk to God on your own and ask him if he's there? This is something that is extremely important. Others of you, you actually want to start living God's new way for the very first time. You've never been a Christian before. Maybe you're realizing it for the first time or maybe you've known that you're not a Christian. But now you see because God is speaking to your heart in ways that I cannot really explain and you now want to live God's new way. Here's where you should start. Start by telling God this. I want you to say this out loud right now wherever you are to God. Don't be ashamed. Say this out loud to God right now wherever you are. God, I have rejected your rule and have tried to be my own ruler. I know that I am not worthy to be accepted by you. I don't deserve your gift of eternal life. Thank you for sending your son to die for me that I may be forgiven. Thank you that he rose from the dead to give me new life. Please forgive me and change me that I may live with Jesus as my ruler. Amen. If you are going to live God's new way and you've told God this and really believed it in your heart, 
then the second thing you have to start doing is you have to actually start living with Jesus as your ruler. This is not just a one-time decision kind of thing that you pray a prayer when you see this guy preach on YouTube. This is a decision that impacts your whole life. Because if that was really true of you and you just invited Jesus to be your ruler and you put your faith in him, that means he's going to want to start doing things in your life. He's going to start wanting to give you reasons to live for him. So that means that you need to start reading the Bible. You need to start reading the Bible. A good book to start, a good place to start if you just invited Jesus to be your ruler is the book of Colossians. You can find that in your Bible online or you can find it in the Bible in the table of contents. The second thing you need to start doing is you need to start talking to God regularly on your own. The Bible calls this prayer. You don't have to use fancy words. You can use simple words as long as it's true in your heart. God already knows what's in your heart. He loves you, accepts you because of Jesus Christ. You don't have to impress him. He just wants you to get to know him better. Start praying and talking to God regularly. Last, thirdly, you need to start doing what the Bible says in obedience to Jesus Christ. You need to start obeying Jesus. There's going to be things in your life that Jesus wants to get out. There's going to be things in your, that aren't in your life that Jesus wants to put in. People that you probably shouldn't be having that kind of relationship with. People that you need to have relationships with that God, that God the Father wants you to have. The fourth thing you need to start doing as you continue to follow Jesus is you need to find a good church. A church that says what God's word says. A church that loves one another and lifts up Jesus and the good news that he brings. The third thing you need to start doing is is if you're going to make Jesus the ruler of your life, if you've just made him the ruler of your life, is you need to keep trusting him. You need to keep trusting him. There is never a time when Jesus is not holding on to you. There is never a moment in your life, if you've let him be your ruler, when he doesn't have you in his arms. Keep trusting him. Keep relying on him for everything that you need for your life. This is why I came, to tell you this good news. This is why a friend shared this video with you on Facebook or sent sent it to you in an email or a text message. Would you join me in prayer now? God in heaven, I thank you for those that have heard this message and have let Jesus be their ruler for the very first time. I thank you, God, for bringing people to believe in your Son. I thank you for sending your Son to die in our place for rebels and raising him again from the dead so that we can have new life and eternal life with you. God, make this message powerful in the lives of those who are hearing it right now. And I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. I want to say a special thank you to Matthias Media for letting me use this outline. This outline is taken from a resource that they have called Two Ways to Live. If you'd like to read more about that, just go to twowaystolive.com. Or maybe you have a question about what it means to follow Jesus or what it means to actually let him be the ruler of your life. If you have a Christian friend around you that you see that is a real Christian, Um, talk to them about it. I'm sure they can help you. But if you don't know anybody that can help you, send me an email, jacob at centraloaks.com. I I would love to help you. The last thing I want to say is please share this video. Maybe there's somebody in your life that you want them to hear this message. You want them to know that they can be God's child I encourage you, share this message on Facebook or YouTube or email or whatever platform you want to share it on. God bless you.